everyone. So I have been planning to do this video for a while and I keep forgetting to actually film it when I do it. So I'm going to walk you through kind of my weekly planning session, how I lay out my week and figure out what tasks I'm going to do in my business and what goals I'm going to work on toward work towards during the week um and I just use two systems they're really simple it's just google calendar and Todoist um I already made a video about how I use Todoist um just kind of walking you through what it is um so I will link to that down below if you missed that or if you're interested in it um and then I'm going to show you google calendars um I am also hosting a workshop about task management and it covers exactly this kind of thing, showing you how to plan your week and your days and all of that stuff. Um, so I'll link to that down below if you're interested in signing up for it. Um, it's basically like a more in-depth version of this video. Okay, so I haven't actually planned my week yet, so I'm just going to do this right here while I'm filming. We'll push this down a little. Um, and I'm just going to show you my screen and just show you exactly what I do and how I kind of plan my week out. Don't judge me for some of the habits I'm trying to work on because, yeah, some of them, you know, obviously this is kind of personal. You're going to see my real schedule and how I plan my week. So no sassy comments, okay? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the first place I start out in is my Todoist account. Um, this is kind of my brain dump. This is where I keep all of my tasks for, you know, ongoing projects, things for my business, ongoing life goals. Um, one of the biggest things right now is that we're training for a half marathon. So we have our training plan um, all laid out in here. So that is kind of something that I need to work into my schedule first. Um, I have a regular day job that I need to work into my schedule, so those two things kind of are the high priority, and then I create my to-do list for the remainder of the week based on just things that I need to get done. So I always start my inbox as kind of a brain dump space. Um, there's a lot of different things that I need to do just for, you know, my day job and for client tasks and things like that, so basically... Um, I'm just going to start filling these out um, with, you know, my regular tasks that I need to get done this week. These are things that are important to get done within the next week. Um, and then as I kind of work my way down the list, I'll make them into, you know, less important tasks or just quick little chores like doing the dishes or, um, you know, wiping down the counters and things like that. Okay, so once I have my tasks that I know I need to get done um, and I have kind of been on my to-do list, then I start to assign them to a day. And this is where Google Calendars kind of comes in. So on my Google Calendar, you can see I have a bunch of different ones. These all have to do with, um, you know, different aspects of my life, basically. Except for this calendar. It keeps popping back up. I've tried to delete it and hide it multiple times. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is from this week. It was a pretty quiet week. You can see that I have my Todoist calendar um, coming in here. So that's why I kind of plan my week in Todoist and then I use Google Calendar to move times and dates around as needed. So I'm going to scooch over to next week. And you can see I already have stuff on my calendar for Todoist. Um, so I already have things like learning Spanish. Um, I have my like different habits I'm trying to keep up with, like drinking a glass of water in the morning and in the afternoon, um, taking my vitamins, I'm keeping a food journal, things like that. So all of this stuff that's already in here is stuff that I've already planned to do. So I have like a barbecue to go to, I have my workshop next weekend and all this stuff. So basically when I go into Todoist and I add dates, it will automatically sync that with my Google Calendar so I can see these within my entire calendar. So, for example, I need to do these. You know, let's just do these for today. Um, and they need to be done by, let's say, 12 p.m. I'm going to schedule guest posts tomorrow and that needs to be done by 4 p.m. Okay, so once these are done, I like to sync them um, just with Todoist. That usually will scooch it over to the Google Calendars. If for whatever reason it doesn't, you can go into the settings, integrations, and sync it from there. 
and it will take a couple of minutes um, to sink in, but for the most part, mine is actually pretty quick. Usually when I refresh this page, you'll start to see them kind of popping in slowly. Okay, so while we wait for those to sync, I'm going to show you how I kind of organize my week because this is not how I'm going to keep it. So essentially what I've been doing is using this reminder to drink a glass of water as um, my time for breakfast. So my work schedule kind of varies each day of the week. Um, it's not super consistent. So some days I work at 6, some days I don't go until 8, some days I'm done by noon, and some days I'm done by 3. So I just kind of fill in you know, the general guess of when I'll be done and I kind of figure everything else around that. So the first thing I do in the mornings is my miracle morning routine, which starts with reading the Bible. I wake up at 4 a.m. most days um, to jumpstart that. So I'm going to kind of scooch everything around just until um, I have my schedule kind of how I want it. Um, obviously on Saturdays and Sundays, I don't wake up quite that early. Um, I usually wake up around seven and you'll notice like sometimes on here, it doubles my events. So updating our budget, usually I'll just delete one of those to fix that. Um, it's not too much of a hassle. So you can just click and drag these around and you can see at the top here, um, are my different workout routines. Um, that's because they haven't been assigned a time yet. So if you click on it, you can uncheck the all day event. And if you just save that, it'll automatically like move it into your day. And then you can schedule that for when you want to do it. So we like to run in the afternoons after dinner. So we'll say at seven, I'm going to do that. Um, here at the bottom, taking my vitamins, that kind of is my bedtime routine. I like to turn off my screens by eight, um, get ready for bed, you know, eat, or not eat, um, brush my teeth, wash my face, you know, kind of do all that typical bedtime routine so that I'm in bed by nine and I can read a book before bed. Um, so that's just kind of, you know, those two codes, drink a glass of water and take vitamins. Um, my second event of drinking a glass of water in the evening, I use as my dinner. So Anytime you see drink a glass of water in the evening, that usually means we're going to eat dinner at that time. Um, I'm also trying to learn Spanish right now. So basically within the Google Calendar app on your phone, you can add goals. And Google will automatically kind of schedule these goals to when you are open on your calendar. So um, it just guessed on Tuesday when I would be available, but I can move this around really easily um, to whatever time works for me. Okay. So the other thing here is that you can see I have something called work hours. And one awesome thing that Google Calendar does is that if you click on a slot of time, you can create an appointment. Um, now you'll need to set this up. And if you just Google, you know, Google Calendar appointments, um, it'll teach you how to do it. It's pretty simple. But basically I can create appointments and we'll just call it like client meetings. And when you edit the details, what it will do is give you a really crazy URL, but you can send this link to um, potential clients or people that you're working with, and they can schedule meetings right there on your calendar. So you can see one of my clients scheduled a meeting with me. Um, it makes it super simple. I know I'm meeting with her from 3 to 3 p.m. And now that she's scheduled it, I can just delete my other open meeting times because I know I'll be working with her at that time. Okay. Okay. So you can see now my to do is tasks that I added just a few minutes ago are now in sync and on my calendar. So you can see add workshop to YouTube, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm just basically going to play around with this and keep moving these blocks around until I get my schedule kind of how I like it. Um, for example, when I get home from work, I like to leave half an hour or an hour afterwards just to make up if I am working later than I thought. And if I get off you know, earlier, I just use that kind of as free time to check email, maybe watch some Netflix. And then I know that at 3 p.m. I got to get back to work and get into my schedule. So any like of this white space that you see, that's basically free time, just time for me to relax and hang out with my husband, you know, jump on social media and do all those kind of boring things. Okay, so um, 
basically you can see I have my week kind of sorted out now. There's nothing overlapping. The only reason these two are is because it's actually the same event, but this is the one that um, my client actually is invited to, and then this is just on my own calendar for my own sake. So you can kind of look at a glance and see how busy I am on any given day. And you can see like on Tuesday, I basically have three hours of free time, um, excuse me, four hours of free time where, you know, I can just read or I can, you know, be creative or just work on whatever I want to work on. And it's really important to make sure that you have gaps in your calendar. And if it makes you feel better, you could always, you know, actually put it on your calendar and just, kind of make space for it so that way you know that nothing can be moved into your free time and it's a lot easier to just kind of take a glance at your calendar um I usually have this up all day long and I know that like right now I am free to do whatever I want and it's a really great way to not feel guilty about trying to get all this stuff done Another really cool thing that you can do on Google Calendars is that if you don't like using Todoist um you can just add regular tasks so in the space above your calendar where all day events usually go, you can add an all day event or you can just add a task like um, clean the kitchen, for example, and it'll add it up here and also to your tasks in Google. And when you check it off, it just crosses it out and you can move this to any day that you want. And it's really easy to move about your calendar. Um, I really like using tasks for quick things like chores where, you know, I do need to clean the kitchen or I need to, um, I don't know, like mop the floors or those things that, you know, I don't necessarily do every single day. Maybe it's every other day, but I just know that I need to, at some point during my free time, get some stuff done that might be, you know, running to the bank or going grocery shopping or quick errands like that. Just that way, when I'm looking at my calendar for the day, I know that at some point after work, I need to run and go run some errands. So Google Calendar is just an awesome, awesome place to be able to plan your day out and be able to kind of time block each day of the week so that way you really get an idea of how much you can handle. Another suggestion that I want to make is to give yourself a little more time than you think you'll need. So if you think it'll only take 30 minutes to do something, you know, plan for an hour. And that way, if you finish early, great, and you could just move on to the next task. But that way, if it does take longer than you expected, you don't have a bunch of tasks that you need to move to the following day because you didn't get them done. There's one more tool that I want to talk about, and obviously you don't need to use the exact same tools that I use in order to plan your week in this way. You know, if you want to use a notebook paper, you can definitely do that. If you want to use sticky notes on a calendar, that's totally fine. I just really think that block scheduling and planning your tasks into your day will really help you. I think that a lot of people, you know, have a massive to-do list, and they just figure that they'll find time to get it done throughout the day. Whatever they don't get done, they move to the next day but we're always adding tasks to our list. So you need to actually schedule them out and make time for them within each day so that way they actually get done. Now, you'll notice that a lot of the tasks that I created um, were kind of building on each other. So some of them were related to the same project, some of them were relating to goals, and the whole way that I actually come up with these tasks is by using my power sheets. Um, if you've never heard of power sheets, they are awesome. Um, they are basically a goal planner and I will link to them down below. They're just, they're kind of all over the place. They're actually sold out right now, but the 2018 ones will be coming soon. And if you're watching this way later, um, just check their website. They always have like books and a ton of other stuff that you can look into just if the actual power sheets aren't available. But it's also a good idea to keep in mind that if you are interested in these, um, they do go out of sale. So make sure that you kind of pick one up soon. So at the beginning, oh, sheets are falling out. At the beginning of the power sheets, um, basically there are a bunch of pages that help you kind of work through your goals and it helps you kind of write things out and plan out what your goals are for the next six months or the next year. So what I did is work through all of these and I made, I think nine goals total and you break down each goal by tasks. So now each week when I plan out my tasks, I have my power sheets open on my desk um, and I have all of my daily goals, my weekly goals and my monthly goals in one sheet. And I know that, you know, my daily goals need to be on every single day of my calendar. 
And some of those are reading my Bible, doing the miracle morning, working out, um, making time to read a book and practicing self-care. And you can see all of those goals on my calendar somewhere. Um, same with my weekly and monthly goals. So if you kind of struggle with, you know, having too much to do, or if you feel like you're doing a ton of stuff and you always have stuff on your to-do list, but it's never actually like getting you anywhere, you might want to look into a system like this where it kind of helps you figure out what your goals are and really narrow them down into the stuff that's actually important. So again, I will link to these um, in the description box. Even if you don't actually buy the power sheets, I really recommend checking out the site and just kind of the community around it. You can just search hashtag power sheets on any form of social media and um, there's a lot of like inspiration and ideas for how to set goals. All right, you guys, that is everything. If you have any questions about my weekly planning, um, you can let me know down below. And like I said, if this is something that you want to dig more into and you want to see exactly how I do this kind of stuff and how to kind of put this through the lens of your business, check out the workshop. Um, it's going to be pretty in-depth. I'm working on it this weekend and it is long. So if this is the kind of thing that you love watching, you are going to love the workshop. All right, have a good week, everyone, and I will talk to you later.